Well, good morning, everybody. Hallelujah. It's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. We're, uh, we're glad for all those that came out and are visiting here, maybe first-time visitors. We're glad to have you here today. It's good to see Brother Mike and his uh, fiance here today. Good to have you here. Hallelujah. Um, just never know what's going to happen in the house of the Lord. So we're, we're looking forward to this service this morning. We want to make just a couple announcements here. Uh, this Friday is uh, going to be a service here at 2 o'clock. It's a uh, good Friday. And afterwards, there's going to be a little fundraiser, potluck, uh, and bake, bake sale thing down there. So need to those that are going to come are going to need to sign up to who's going to bring something. There's a sign-up sheet down by the stairs there. If you do that, we appreciate that. Also, this right after service, there's a waffle uh, brunch downstairs. So anybody who might be hungry, just right on down, downstairs, there's going to be some waffles and uh, it's uh, it's to help out the youth and that's 10 and 12 dollars uh, 10 for kids and 12 for adults uh, May 26th 7th and 8th is ladies retreat that's three days at the campground I believe it's a campground right campgrounds and that's all kind of accommodations is uh, 169 dollars and that that needs to be in before April 27th so uh, Let's stand this morning. Before we start this service, we want to, anybody have a special need, prayer they need prayed for? Just lift your hand and uh, we'll all pray for that. Also, we need to pray for uh, Nina and Steve. We had a request uh, mentioned that they're, they're having a hard time and we just need to bring the, lift their name up in prayer and uh, we serve a great big God. He's a merciful God, and we want to we wanna go into this service and, and talk to God, and each and everybody here has a say. Let's do that right now in Jesus' name. Lord, we love you. We thank you. We're so thankful, Lord God, for your mercy unto us, oh God. We come here looking for you, Lord. We, we want to enter into a flow of your spirit here today. God, it's only your spirit that makes a difference. Where your spirit is, there is liberty, and we're calling upon your spirit here today. We pray, Lord, for every request that was mentioned, Lord, every uplifted hand, Lord, that you see, and we know that you see the heart of every request, God, and we know that you're a healer, a great big God, and a merciful God, Lord. We just love you today. We're going to lift you up and give you praise in Jesus' name. the going down of the same you alone are God almighty and you're worthy of the highest praise cause in my failures you are faithful and in my weakness I will Oh 
walking the same old road for miles and miles. You've been hearing the same old voice tell the same old lies. If you're trying to fill the same old holes inside, there's a better life. There's a better life. Because if you got pain, a pain taker if you feel lost he's a way maker if you need freedom or saving he's a prison shaking savior if you got chains he's a chain breaker we've all searched for light in the dead dead of night found ourselves worn out from the same old fight we've all run to things we know just ain't right but there's a better life there's a better life if you've got pain he's a pain taker if you feel lost he's a way if you need freedom or saving, he's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, he's a chain breaker. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom or saving, he's a prison shaking. Savior, if you got chains, he's a chain breaker. We've all searched for the light of the day in the dead of night. We've all found ourselves worn out by the same old fight. We've all run to things we know just ain't right. But there's a better life. There's a better life. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. He's that and a whole lot more. Hallelujah. Praise God. You may be seated in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise God. It's a good thing to be in the house of the Lord this morning. A couple years ago, we went to uh, Indiana to take Jesse, I think it was, or or uh, Jer or one of those and we took them to uh, the school up there and we spent the night and then the next morning was Sunday morning we went to their church which is a huge thousand people congregation just a great congregation and uh, uh, and before before the service you know just sitting in a pew uh, everybody's shaking hands, greeting one another, which is a good thing. Hallelujah. Praise God. <laughs> and, uh, and, and I didn't really know nobody really there. And I mean, I, so I just was sitting there. And Brother Anderson, who is the music director, he's kind of heavy set. And he had some kind of stroke where half of his face is like plopped down. And he talks out of the side of his mouth. And and he's maybe 60 years old 
and really not, I guess, a specimen, uh, you know, really, you know, he just, whatever. <laughs> but when he got on the piano, he just was tapping a few chords while all the fellowship was going on, and, and the presence of God came in that place. The gentle, gentle presence of God came in that place. You know, God is a spirit. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. But if you notice, every time you come to God, it's always the gentleness that takes us, that helps us. It's a gentleness of God. He said, come on to me, all ye that labor and heavy laden, I will give you rest. Learn of me, for I am meek and gentle. It's a gentleness of God. The gentleness of God, when you think of this flower, I don't know if it's real. No. <laughs> Pretend it's real. He waters it. He keeps it alive for its time. The gentleness of God. Oh, you say, oh, what about the wars? That's man. That's man. But God is gentle. And that spirit is here today. And if anybody has anything they need from God, he's a gentle God. You can go to him. He's not going to condemn. He's gentle. In Jesus' name. Miracle 
Miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Who you are, that is who you are. Yeah. 
God, all we are. We give you permission. Our hearts are yours. We want you. We want you. We love you. And we'll never stop. Can't live without you. Jesus, we love you. We can't get enough. All this is for you. Jesus, we love you. And we can't get enough. All this without you. Jesus, we love you. And we can't get enough. All this is for you. Jesus, we love you. And we'll never stop. Can't live without you. Jesus, we love you. We can't get enough. All this is for you. Yeah, hallelujah. Let's go ahead and take a moment. Let's worship God. He's worthy of our praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God, I worship you. God, I worship you. I worship you, oh God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise your name, oh God. I worship your holy name today. I worship your holy name today. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. We're going to pray really quick here this morning. I feel that God wants to do something great in our midst. There's healing here this morning. And some people have come to church this morning with some serious ailments, but I'm here to declare the healing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He is a healer. He is a healer today. Praise God. All you got to do is reach out and touch it and say, God, I need to touch you today. So I invite you to worship God. Let's pray. Lord, we're so thankful to be in your presence today. You're awesome. You're holy. You're mighty. God, we're believing you for the manifestation of your power and authority. I pray in Jesus' name that over this beautiful people, those here, those at home in our Sunday school downstairs, that the glory cloud of Almighty God would rest upon us in Jesus' name, bringing deliverance and heal and restoration and healing, I pray in Jesus' name. Bless your people. Bless those who gathered here. Bless us as we bring forth your word. We pray in Jesus' name. Everybody say in Jesus' name. Praise God. Matthew 19, and we're going to look at one little scripture. We're coming in on the end of the conversation. But Jesus beheld them. It said unto them, with men, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. With man, this is impossible, but with God, hallelujah, all things are possible. All things are possible with God. All we got to do is simply believe that, that with God, all things are possible are possible. Praise God. I confess before you this morning, and our title of our message is The Limitations of Humanity. We have limitations. We have limitations. You may be seated this morning. God bless you. Thank you for coming out to the house of the Lord. Good to see your smiling faces. We have limitations. A rich man came to Jesus by night and said, Master, what can I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, Have you kept the commandments? And said, Yes, check, 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 check. Jesus said to the rich man, not as, it's not about riches, it's about if we hold something back from God. And the rich man said, I've done all those commandments. I've kept those from my youth. And Jesus, once Jesus said, there's one thing that's lacking. And he said, go sell all that you have and come and follow me. And the rich man walked away sorrowful. 
because Jesus asked him to do something that was dear to him, and Jesus asked him to do something that really hurt. Praise God. It's easy. I find it easy to fast from fish. <laughs> Growing up on PEI, five minutes from the ocean, I don't know why, but my wife and I don't eat fish. Our kids do. I grew up around fish. Some people ate those things in self-defense. We're surrounded by them so much. So I find it very easy to say, God, I am on a spiritual high. I'm not going to eat fish for the next 40 days. <laughs> and you know, but if God says to me, don't drink any Tim Hortons Earl Grey tea with cream for the next 40 days, then I'd have to say to God, we have an issue here, God. I didn't mind giving up that which is easy, that which was dear to me, but God, now you really want me to give up Earl Grey tea with cream? Are you serious, God? I didn't mind giving up that which is easy to give up. And the rich ruler said, I've kept the commandments, I've done my little checklist, but Jesus said, there's one thing that you're lacking. Go and sell all that you have, give to the poor, and come follow me. And Jesus is looking at us this morning and saying, you want to serve me? You want to please me? That's great. But what happens when God puts us in his crosshairs and said, you want to serve me? You want to go to the next level in servitude to me? Give up this. Let that bitterness go. No, no, God, that's my teddy bear. That's my comfort zone. Let it go. Let fear and, and unbelief go. God, I can't let those things go. That's why that's, uh, they're, they're my comfort zone. And I think God is calling us today out of our comfort zone. Where is your comfort zone? Where are you comfortable? Where are you comfortable in your service to God? But God is saying, you know what? It's time for you to get out of your comfort zone and take the next step. And the rich ruler went away so sorrowful because he couldn't take the next step. And his disciples said to him, when he seen the young man going, and he said to the Lord, said, who can be saved? Somehow they, they equated salvation to riches. And they said, who, who, who then can be saved? But to Jesus said this, he said, with man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. And here's the basis of your poss impossibility in God is that you reach that place where you give up that which is dear to you. Your little crutch, my little crutch, my little comfort zone. When you do that, you go into the next level of God. We as humans have limitations, but when we reach that place of just, just letting it go, wow, there's so much liberty. The things I gave up when I gave to the Lord, I thought I couldn't live without them. But now there's so much liberty, there's so much freedom, there's, 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 too much, there's so much power. So you and I have a choice this morning. We can walk the path of impossibilities and our human limitations, and they're, they're so obvious. Or we can choose to walk the path of the Lord, which leads us into the, into the realm of the impossible, the supernatural. The liberty in, in the spirit of God. I don't know about you this morning, but I'm, I'm going to choose to follow him. Amen. And God, if there's, if there's any weight, as according to Hebrews 12, 1, if there's any weight in my heart that's hindering me from going to the next level, God, I'm more than willing to give it up. I surrender. I surrender. And when you surrender to God, you experience what they call the joy of surrender, which is so contrary to human nature. Who here likes to lose? in chess, basketball. Nobody likes to lose. We all want to win. We all want the blue ribbon. But there's joy and surrender when we come to God and we give up that which is our comfort zone, that which where, where, where we exist in our limitations. When we come to the Lord, when we give those things up, there, there comes such a sweet joy and gentleness that comes from God. And then you ask yourself this question, why didn't I give this up years ago? I've been holding this, excuse my English, but I've been holding this stupid thing for so long. And when you let it go, you realize how really stupid that thing was. It was limiting me. Could you imagine that rich, rich ruler went and sold everything he had and gave to the poor? He would have had fulfillment of his own question. Master, what, what can I do to inherit eternal life? He would have experienced eternal life. 
What's holding us from going to the next level in God? What's, what's holding us back from the next commitment to God? And God's saying this morning, let it go. Now, folks, we're standing in the same place that the rich man was standing. And God's asking us, great, you've done this, you've done that. Great, great, great. Now, let's go to the next level. Give this up. Oh, God. I thought serving you was going to be so easy. I thought it was all flowers and butterflies. There is times of flowers and butterflies. But there's times of getting down before God in a serious heart and say, God, I surrender these things to you. Take them from me. Liberate me. Set me free. The Bible gives us insight to the nature of man. And if this doesn't fit you, please excuse me, but this is most of us. First Peter 6 and 4, 1 Timothy 6 and 4 says, He is proud. Talk about man. He is proud, knowing nothing. Anybody know that? You, you ever say to somebody, you know nothing. God does. He knows everything, but is obsessed with disputes and arguments over words. Whoa, I feel conviction over that one. But is obsessed with disputes and arguments over words. Do you know why? Because we don't like to lose. That's why we debate and argue, because we don't like to lose. I should teach this for pre-marriage from which come envy and strife and revilings and evil suspicions. Perverse disputing of men of corrupt minds and this destitute of the truth, supposing that gain his godliness from such withdraw thyself. Paul was telling Timothy, I've been around the track a few times and here's what a man is. We're prideful. <laughs> We're prideful. Hate losing. Hate being wrong. Hate losing an argument. We like to argue, but we always want to win. But sometimes you don't win. And you're married men, even when we win, we lose. This is, this is marriage counseling right now. Even when you win, you're going to lose. She's going to give you that look. You might have won the argument, but you're going to get that look. That frying pan's coming out. And it's going to be applied to your forehead. So pick your words carefully. They could be your last. The English Standard Version says, talking about Paul talking to Timothy, he is puffed up with conceit and understands nothing. He has an unhealthy craving for controversy and for quarrels about words which produce envy, decisions, dissensions, slander, evil suspicions, and constant friction among people who are depraved in mind and deprived of the truth Imagine that God is, is a mean of gain. That's a pretty deplorable state for man, isn't it? We're a prideful bunch. We don't like being told. We're, we're limited. I'm limited. There's only certain things I can do. In my ability, there's only certain things I can do. My brains only bring me so far. Then they go on by themselves and leave me alone. My physical strength can only do so much. My spirituality can only, only do so much. There comes a place where you've got to say, God, I, 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 I really need you. I need the mind of the spirit to replace my carnal thoughts. And God, I need your strength to forgive, to love, and be merciful. And God, don't forsake me. God, I, I need you. I, God, I'm confessing before you my limitations. I'm confessing before you that I live in the realm of, the impo in, in the realm of impossibility. There's things I can't do. You can't live for God without God. Don't bother trying. You can't serve God without God. You're going to fail. But you can serve God, please God, and walk with God with him giving you the help. <laughs> we try to serve God and or try to find God or try to find contentment, try to find peace, and try to find fulfillment, perhaps in education. I'm not an anti-educator. Don't leave here thinking, he's got grade three education. That's all you need. No, folks, I, I believe in education. I graduated from high school, graduated from Baba's College, graduated from university. But all of those libraries, I, I didn't find God. I found God at the foot of the cross. So you can't find God in your education. Get your education, but you're not going to find God there. The Bible says we're ever learning in 2 Timothy 3 and 7. Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. You can, you can know all things, all chemical equations, all scientific equations. You can know the 
writings of the ancient and the philosophers. You can study all the psychology and sociology and anthropology you want. You can know everything there is under the sun. But until you get to know who Jesus is, everything else is vain. But when you know Jesus is, go ahead and study the psychologists, the sociologists, the anthropologists. But make sure you know who Jesus is. Paul told Timothy that, that they're ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. What is the truth? Jesus defined it as, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus defined it. So we find education, we find fulfillment in the truth. What's that? Jesus Christ. That's where we find our fulfillment. And then get your BA, MA, PhD, all those stuff. Sometimes you even try to find it in religion. Paul told Timothy again, 2 Timothy 3 and 5, having a form of God in us, but denying the power thereof from such, turn away. We can't find God in religion. Isn't that crazy from a pastor say in a church, you can't find God in religion? Religion put Jesus Christ on the cross. Religion murdered the apostles, disciples of the Lord, except for John. He died of natural causes. causes. All other ones died of murderdom. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Paul said, from such turn away. You cannot find God in religion. You find God in a relationship. You find God in a connection with him. You can find God when you know who he is and you cry out with faith in your heart, Abba, Father. And when you reach that place, when you declare that he indeed is your Abba, Father, then and only then you become a son and a daughter of God. And when you become a son and daughter of God, he becomes your Abba. That's a relationship. Jesus, oh, let me tell you something. Jesus didn't come to establish a religion. Cricket, cricket, cricket. Jesus didn't come to establish this church and that church and this religion and that religion. Jesus came to establish a relationship. The creator came to establish a relationship between the creature. Jesus came to establish a relationship. He said, I came to seek and to save that which was lost. What was lost? That that pre-fall utopia that Adam and Eve enjoyed in the, in the garden where they'd walk with the Lord in the cool of the day and they'd talk to him. He'd come down in the cool of the day and say, Adam, Eve. And they'd come out from where they were and they'd have fellowship with him. But sin severed that, destroyed that. And Jesus said, I come to seek and to save that which was lost, that pre-fall utopia, that pre-fall purity, that, 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 that pre-fall relationship. And that's what God wants is a relationship with us. You can't find education. You can't find your money. You can't find it in religion. You've got to find it at the foot of the cross and say, God, I come before you with all of my sins and shortcomings and ask that God, you would help me. Help me, God. I've walked down a few libraries in my life. I've never seen Jesus there. I've seen all kinds of books. But one day at the foot of the cross, I soon seen who he was. Your savior, my savior. Hallelujah. And when I came to him, and when you came to him, we had a relationship with him. He adopted us. We are adopted into the household of faith. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? We didn't choose God. God chose us. He came down into the sin and adopted us. Put us in his family. Forgave us. Loved us. And then he said, now go tell other people who you were and that you're adopted. Someone came to me this morning. I went and had my Sunday morning breakfast, which was very light. After eating yesterday, I couldn't move for beautiful food I had yesterday. And this morning I went and had my breakfast and, and uh, they came by and said somebody paid for your meal isn't that nice I don't know what was going to happen I would have steak and eggs <laughs> but all I had was two eggs over easy with whole wheat toast my Sunday morning breakfast I said and I know, I know who did it and I, and I asked God to bless them bless them in Jesus name then one of the waitress came up to me beautiful girl from Iraq 
She come up. I, when you guys have service any other day, but but Sunday? I said Wednesday. We have Bible study. Great. She said I want to come. So she gave me her pad for taking her order. Can I help you? So I put down our church and church time and address. She said I will be for Wednesday. What am I doing? I'm just an adopted kid telling somebody else is lost. Said, hey, there's a, there's a God in heaven that loves us and is willing to adopt us. Willing to adopt us. That's all I am. I say, hey, I'm adopted into the house, into the house of faith. Abba, Father, he loves us. Praise God. And Paul said in Philippians 3 and 10, one of the most hurtful Scriptures that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering be made conformable unto his death. Paul says, I want to know him. Paul was very educated. He had a good reputation amongst his peers. But when he converted in Acts chapter number 9, 14 years later, he told the church in Philippi, I want to know him. I want to know Jesus Christ. I want to have fellowship with him. I want to connect with him. New Living Translation says, I want to know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. I want to suffer with him, sharing in his death. Paul was going to a place in his journey on earth that, you know what, I'm living in this realm of impossibilities. I can't do many things. My education is doing it. My religion is not doing it. But in Acts chapter 9, he had an experience with God. And thank God, Christianity is all about having an experience with God. And when you have an experience with God, that causes you to have a relationship with God. I've had, you've had a relationship with God that blew my socks off, that changed my life. I told a good friend of mine in town, and he, he had to think about that for a while. As a pastor, I said, I, I, I'm not religious. He chewed that for months, and then he finally came back and said, what do you mean by that? You're a pastor. You're not religious. I said, no, I'm not religious. I have a relationship with God that might make me look like I'm religious, but I have a relationship with God, first of all. And then we have a little bit of religion. But it's about relationship. And Paul said, I want to know him. And the basis, of, the basis of the impossibility that God wants to lead you and I to is that we know who God is. And when we know who God is, we know what God can do. And when we know what God can do, we can partake of the things that God is doing. God is not limited physically. God is not limited. We can pray here, and God can touch somebody over in China. They can pray in China, and some over here in Canada can be touched by the power of God. God is not limited. He knows all things. There's nothing hidden from God. He knows all things. The very hairs of our head, and some of mine are leaving, but the very hairs of our head are numbered. He knows all things. He knows the reasons of our spirit. He knows what makes us tick, yet he loves us. Yet he loves us. That blows me away that God knows every detail of every one of us, and yet he says, I love him. I love him. I love him. Praise God. And then you reach that place when you have that relationship with God. That it, there's, a, there's a, a song that says, a whole new world. When you really love God and have a relationship with him, and you walk through that door of relationship with God, there's a whole new world out there called the realm of the impossibility that God wants to take you and I to. We've got to leave our realm of, of limitations behind. It's called the carnal world. It's called the earthly world. We can leave that behind. We still live here, but we operate in a different realm. We operate in a different plateau when we know who God is. We believe in miracles. We believe in signs and wonders. We believe in the power and the demonstration of God. I believe in healing. I've seen light grows. I've seen a dead person raised back to, to life again. I believe in miracles. Praise God. I believe that God knows all things. I was praying for a lady one time down in New Brunswick, and, and uh, when I was praying for her, and we were all gathered around, and, and God spoke to me and said, she has a brain tumor. So I began to pray under my breath, praying for her to have her, for her brain tumor. And then they spun around and said, we've got to pray for her. She has a brain tumor. God had already told me that. 
I was driving across a bridge one day, and a girl I went to high school with, or Bible school with, God said, I got a word for you, for her, and you're going to have to give her these words. I'm driving across a bridge, two-lane, four-lane bridge in the, in the Brunswick, Fredericton. I said, how am I, how am I going to find her in the city? Like, I got a word from God, but I, I, God, I don't know where she is. And I'm driving across the There she was in the car beside me. So I said, hey, meet me at the Frederick Mall. I got, a, I got a word from God for you. I'm driving on the highway to the, to the bridge. And, ah, 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 I got a word from God for you. So we went in the Frederick Mall. And it wasn't me, God. Folks, this is, this is God. I would have just walked up and said, hey, how's she going? But God said, no, 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 no. So I met her in the Frederick Mall. And I said, here's what's going on in your life. And I read her like there was no tomorrow. And she sat there with her eyes wide open. Her friend came over, he's telling me everything that's going on in my life. It wasn't me. That was just a voice box for God. God knew what she was going through. God knew what she needed to hear. So I'm talking about the, the realm of the impossibility that, that God is trying to get you and I to live in and exist in. With God, with man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. We can lay hands on the sick, according to Mark chapter 16. We can lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Praise God. We can pray for somebody with a heart attack or cancer, and, 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 and they can be healed. I've heard of people being healed from cancer. One lady is praying for a lady in, the, in, the, in, the, in a wheelchair at our general conference, and she came in the wheelchair, and she's praying with a brain tumor. Well, she's praying for the lady in the wheelchair. She came in the wheelchair, and that brain tumor shrunk. My God can do anything, anything, anything. My God can do anything but fail. He can do anything but fail. And God is trying to get to church. Wake up, guys. Come here. I can do all things. Hmm. Matthew 11 and 28, Brother Nolf. Come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. We're at a crossroads now where where we exist, but where God wants to come, wants us to go to. Come out, come out from, uh, come on to me, all you that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest on your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. We've got to reach that crossroads in our life. Do I live where I am? Do I exist where I am? Do I try to serve God? Let me tell you something. Don't try to serve God in the realm of the impossibility. You'll be frustrated, you'll be cranky and unstable. I can't get that three finger arthritis. You'll be so frustrated if you try to serve God in the realm of the carnal, the fleshly, the impossible. You'll be cranky. <laughs> but if you, if you can make up your mind today, that I'm leaving all this junk behind, and I'm going to the next level in God. It might cost you something. It might cost you something. But it's worth it. It's worth it. When you surrender to God, it's worth it. When you reach that place of total surrender to God, there comes a joy, there comes a rush from the presence and the spirit of God that enables you to be propelled into the dimension that God wants you to go. I hope I'm not too deep and funky here today. But folks, I'm sick and tired of trying to serve God in the carnal. I can't do it. But I know there's a place in God. There's place in prayer. There's place in worship. There's place in the dimensions of God that we've got to get to. Praise God. I know there's things there. I've, I've experienced them. I've seen them. The prophetic. The supernatural. The healing. The deliverance. I've seen them. And God, I can't serve you. And I can't please you just where I am. But God, I'm surrendering to, to you today. And, and God, I, I don't want to be like that, 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 that young ruler, that young rich man who, who counted the cost, but he couldn't give it up, and he walked away. I don't want to walk away this morning, but I want to surrender all I have inside of me to God and say, Lord, take it all. Sur- surrender. I, Lord, I give you everything, the good and the bad. God, I give you my ability and my disabilities. I give you my strength. I give you my weaknesses. I give it all to you. When you can reach that place where you give it all to God, you're going to be blessed of God, used of God. God is going to allow you to be a channel for his blessing and his power and his authority will come into your life in a dimension you never thought thought was available. Now, the devil likes to lie. 
He's, he's a liar. He's saying to some of you now, you guys can't do this because this is only reserved for the supersonic spiritual. That's a lie. This is reserved for the humble. This is, this is reserved for the whosoever will to reach that place and say, God, I surrender. And to walk in surrender and servitude to God. Then you'll say what Paul said in Philippians 4 and 13. When Paul reached that crossroad in Acts chapter 9, here's the basis of his conversion when, when God knocked him off his high horse and identified who he was. Who art thou, Lord? Who art thou, Jehovah? He was a monotheistic Jew. Believed only in one God. When he said, who art thou, Lord? He meant, who art thou, Jehovah? Who art thou, El Shaddai? And he identified himself. He said, I'm Jesus whom you persecuted. You're picking a fight on me. And then Paul responded and said, Lord, what will you have me to do? Now, we could ask ourselves that same question to most every one of us, myself included. Lord, what do you want me to do? What do you want from me, God? What, what, what do you require from me? And Paul answered that question at the crossroads of his life. What do you want from me, Lord? And God told him what he wanted. And Paul left Acts chapter 9 and never looked back. Went in, was used mightily of God. Wrote over half of the New Testament. Was used powerfully of God. In his limited world, which is very limited, he couldn't do so much. But when he came to God in total surrender, and there's your key, total surrender. Then he said in Philippians 4 and 13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. When you reach that place of total submission and surrender to the sovereignty and to the will of God, you can say, as Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You can, you can lay your hands upon the sick and they shall recover. You can and you will cast out devils in Jesus' name. You will and can talk in new tongues. You will and can manifest the power and the authority of God. You can and will walk in a liberty that's reserved for the blood washed, that we can walk in that liberty and declare the word of God with assurance and confidence. The greatest battle we fight today is, please, leave the devil alone. I'm going to send him a sympathy card. We pick on him so much. Well, I can't serve because the devil, I can't serve. The devil is so big, and I've addressed this. I'm going to continue to address it till the day I die. The stupidity in the church that we serve a little God, and there's a big devil out there. You got it backwards. We serve a great, big, wonderful God. And there's a little devil out there who's scared of our great, big, wonderful God. And he's scared of the children of God because inside of us is the great, big, wonderful God through the baptism of the Holy Ghost. So get rid of the stupidity that we're victims. We're not victims. We are victors in Jesus Christ. Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I was telling the people that are at our Bible school yesterday, which I really enjoyed yesterday. Next class is May 7th. I wish I would have did it every two weeks like it was announced. I wish I did because I enjoyed it so much yesterday. But I told them a story about betting the merchant yesterday, a man from Perth Andover, New Brunswick. Anybody here been in Perth Andover, New Brunswick? I thought so. Perth Andover, New Brunswick, the center of the universe. Scientifically proven by people from Perth Andover. It's a, just a little wide spot in the road. And Benny the Merchant was going to church in Perth Anna the New Brunswick, and, and God gave him a vision of a, a bunch of people, he said, with, with brown faces. He said, uh, that was weird. And he ended up going to Brazil. And that vision that God gave him came to pass. A little guy from Perth Anna the New Brunswick had revival up and down the Amazon River in Brazil. Baptized people, established churches. God poured out his spirit because the little guy from New Brunswick reached that place of, it's impossible for me to go from New Brunswick to the Brazil, but with God, all things are possible. And he went to Brazil and did the will of God because he surrendered to the will of God. He surrendered to the purpose of God. With God, with men, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. I'm believing God today. I'm choosing to believe God today. When you let me let me let me speak to you prophetically. When you come to the end of yourself, you're going to come to the beginning of God. When you come to the border of your limitations, 
You're coming to the borderless kingdom of the impossible in the kingdom of God. When we can get the end of place of my carnality and my hesitation and my compromise and surrender totally to God, God's going to open up a realm and with you to serve God with power and authority. And you're going to be able to walk through temptations and struggles. And you're going to face your Goliath over nine feet tall, over 500 pounds. You're going to face him. And so you come to me with all your swords and your spears, but I'm coming to you in the name of the Lord. David did it because he knew who God was. He surrendered to God. I come to you in the name of the Lord. And he let that rock go and hit that giant between the blinkers and down with the giant. And David went over, had no sword, had no weapon, but he took this weapon of the, the sword off the giant and cut his head off. Beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> and that battle was won because a little guy believed. It's still... <laughs> I'm getting ready to go here pretty soon. It doesn't matter how big you are or how small you are. What matters is the big God that lives inside of you. Amen. The big God that lives inside of you. It doesn't matter your limitations or disabilities. I was prophesied over by a blind man in his living room in St. John the Brunswick. He couldn't see me, but yet he can see in the realm of the realm. And it came to pass. It came to pass. He prophesied over me. He said, they're going to ask where did Mark Shivery come from? And I spoke at a district conference a few years ago in Oshawa. And Brother Mason from Surrey, British Columbia, got up after me. He said, I got to ask before I start, where did Mark Shivery come from? The blind man told me that that was going to happen years previous to that. And it came to pass word for word. My God can do anything. My God can do anything. Let's stand this morning. God can forgive because he loves. God can restore because he loves. God can use because he loves. God can save because he loves. God can heal because he loves. God can deliver us and set us free because he loves. Praise God. Oh, I feel God here today. Jesus, we're so thankful for your presence, your word today. God, that glory cloud, I, I pray that it would show up here today, would show up in Jesus' name. Let the Shekinah glory of God rest upon this people, those who gathered here, those in their home, I pray in Jesus' name. Let your glory manifest itself to us, O oh God, as we walk before you with humility and submissiveness to the will of God. I'm praying that the key of the Spirit would be unleashed today. O oh God, help us, use us for your glory. We, Lord, surrender to you and your sovereignty. And the church says, in Jesus' name. Okay, you surrendered. You said it in Jesus' name. Now, here's, here's your deal. You surrendered. Wait and see what God's going to do. Wait and see what God's going to do. Barrington, I struggled as a new convert. But I reached that place where I said, God, I surrender. I can't do it. God said, finally. And he walked in my life and enabled me to live for God victoriously. I still fight battles, but I know where I can go to. When I need a, a, a time of trouble, I go into the presence of God. Praise God. Here's a key for you. Keep coming back to God. Keep coming back to God. We're going to sing. I invite you to worship with us this morning. In Jesus' name, praise God. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. How many desire a close walk with God? Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. A close, close. He's near them of a broken and contrite spirit. He's near them of a broken and contrite spirit. Hallelujah. Praise God. Oops, almost hit this thing. God, we love you. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness and mercy, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you for the word today. Hallelujah. Praise God. Your word gives us guidance. Help us to adhere to your word in Jesus' name. Don't forget downstairs, the Waffle uh, uh, waffle Fest down there. Bring a little money with you. <laughs> Hallelujah.